Sally the Caterpillar had eaten an extra-large lunch of milkweed, so she decided to take a walk before her nap, as her tummy was full. She walked over some gravel that was warm from the morning sun, and stopped to look at the strangest tree she had ever seen. Its trunk was perfectly straight and shiny. Sally decided to climb up, and as soon as she came to a perfectly round branch at the top, the branch had a round hole inside it. It's like a cave, she said. What a great place for a nap. She curled her body round the inside of it. The cave she was in started to spin around. Round and round, faster and faster. She wasn't afraid. She was enjoying spinning around, and she fell asleep. She did not know how long she had been sleeping when she was awakened by a sound that was going to change her life. It was a loud whistle. The cave started to slow down until it came to a stop. Sally peeped out from her little hiding place and saw a lot of people. A loudspeaker voice started saying, The 10 o'clock express train to Miami arrived in New York on platform 4. Stopping in Washington, D.C., this is the Silver Bullet Express. Please board the train and take your seats. The train departs in 10 minutes. This strange tree isn't a tree at all, thought Sally. I am in the middle of one of the train's wheels. Now, a normal caterpillar might have taken the ten minutes that the train was standing in the station to leave its hiding place and escape to safety. But not Sally. What an adventure, she thought. I am going to go to Washington, D.C., and maybe I will go to see the White House where the President lives. When I get to Washington, I will climb off. Sally did exactly the opposite of what smart caterpillars do. She left her safe round cave in the hub of the train's wheel and climbed up to the very top of the train. What a view! She could see all the people boarding the train with their luggage. This is the way to travel, said Sally, first class and free. She had just settled into a good spot right on top of the train when she heard a deep voice say, Who is climbing on top of me? Sally stayed very still, but the voice said, I know you are there. Who are you? I am Sally the Caterpillar, she replied. What are you doing? We are leaving in two minutes for Washington, D.C. You are on the fastest train in America. I am the Silver Bullet Express, and you did not pay for your ticket. Climb down. I'm sorry, Mr. Silver Bullet. I did not mean to be here. It's too late for me to climb down now before you leave, but I promise to get off in Washington. And she added, I will get off in Washington as I want to see the White House. But it was too late for any more conversation. Doors in the carriages were slamming shut. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. The station master waved a green flag and blew his whistle, and the train pulled out of the station. Sally had chosen a place on top of the train just beside the whistle, so the noise was very loud. Your whistle is very loud, said Sally. Yes, it is, said the silver bullet. I am the fastest train, and I also have the loudest whistle. All the other trains know when I am coming into a station. I'm going to be very busy now, Sally, taking all these people to Washington, so I will not be able to talk to you, he said. You'd better hang on tight. It's going to be windy up there. At least we have good weather, and it's not going to rain this morning. When we get to Washington, you can get off, and I will not tell anyone about your free ride. Sally smiled. The silver bullet was not that mad at her. He even sounded as if he liked her. OK, she said. I will hang on tight. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. But the silver bullet did not reply. He was too busy doing what big trains do. The silver bullet did not stop in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, because he was the express train. 
It was the custom, however, that this important train blew his whistle to let all the other trains on the local lines know that the silver bullet was passing through at high speed. He used to love to blow his loud whistle even if he was not stopping to make some of the smaller trains jump and look up and say, there is the famous express train, the silver bullet, carrying important people. Some of the smaller trains in the smaller stations even claimed they had met him, which was not true, as he never stopped there. When they were coming into Philadelphia, the silver bullet decided on the right moment to whistle, but to his astonishment there was no sound. He tried again. Silence. No whistle. There was just the sound of a fast train whooshing through the station. number of smaller trains were surprised. Wasn't that the Silver Bullet Express, said a younger branch train? He didn't whistle. Yes, it was the Silver Bullet, and he didn't whistle, said one of the older local trains. What could have happened? He always likes to let us know how important he is. The Silver Bullet was very upset. He hadn't been able to whistle. He was afraid of what would happen when he came into Washington, D.C. It was one thing not to whistle when passing through a station, but arriving in Washington, D.C., everyone was going to laugh at him. Sally was hanging on tight, and she knew something was wrong. "'Are you okay, Mr. Silver Bullet?' she said. "'No, I am not okay,' he said. "'Why not?' said Sally. "'My loud whistle is broken. We are going to be arriving in Washington, D.C. soon, and everybody will laugh at me.' "'Maybe I can fix it,' said Sally, not having any idea how she could fix an important express train's whistle. "'That's a ridiculous idea,' said the Silver Bullet. "'You are far too small to fix this problem. Leave me alone.' Sally climbed down into the whistle and immediately saw the problem. The wire to the whistle had broken in two. "'Can you hear me, Mr. Silver Bullet?' she shouted. "'Leave me alone,' said the express train. The wire is broken, she shouted. I can hold one end of the wire in my feet, and the other end of the wire in my hands, and if you do not pull too hard, the whistle will work. I'm long enough to reach. There was no reply. Try it, she shouted. Try it now. She hung on to both pieces of the wire with all her strength. <laughs> It works, said the express. Several cows in the field, who had watched the silver bullet fly by for years, but never heard him whistle, looked up when they heard the noise. What a show-off he is, said one of the cows, and he isn't even coming into a station. Can he do it again when we come into Washington, D.C., said the silver bullet to Sally. Yes, of course I can, but don't pull too hard. It stretches me, said the caterpillar. This has been a presentation of the first half of the book, The Caterpillar and the Express Train. If you've enjoyed this presentation, please go to Amazon.com to order the book. On Amazon, type The Caterpillar and the Express Train into the search box, or use the address on the screen now.